In the first free elections in this country, over 19 million eligible South Africans turned up at the polls. The now famous pictures taken that day show lions snaking for miles as people, the youth and the elderly waited to vote for the first time. The months and the years between the fall of apartheid and the elections were riven with uncertainty but overpowered by hope and sheer will. And the elections prevailed. On this Freedom Day, in a major pre-election year, we take stock of that first election, reminisce about the hows and the whats, but mostly on what was present then that is missing today, that is once again needed to create a platform for people to express their free will. And to do that, we are in conversation tonight with the first IEC Chair, Judge Johan Krechler. Hopefully, we'll be joined by the IEC's uh, Deputy CEO, but for now, we'll just talk to uh, Justice Johan Krechler. Good evening to you and welcome, Judge. Let's start with the operational side. You know, at that point, you were a man without experience for the job. You were plucked from the SCA. You didn't have staff. You didn't have budget. And then they wanted you to deliver all of this in just four months to pull off an historic feat. And I would love for you to take us back to your recollections uh, of that time. Uh, good, good evening, Iman, and yeah, to the viewers. Uh, yes, it, it, it was impossible, and therefore it just bloody well had to be done. Uh, it was a roller coaster. If we had known exactly how difficult it was, we probably would have said, no, thank you. We'll ask somebody else to do the job. Uh, in the event, it was a success. It was a political success. It was a political success because the people of South Africa, of all colors and creeds and persuasions, wanted it to work. The time had come for us to pass through this gate to the liberty and the far side. The political leaders played a very, very responsible role. The electorate as a whole played a very, very responsible role. The threats of violence disappeared. Uh, the problems of administrative inexperience and lack of capacity were overcome with a bit of a lick and a promise and a little bit of scotch tape here and chewing gum there. But in the end it worked. And we arrived on a new platform, a new level, where we all had to settle down and say, no, we're here, where do we go from now? Mm. We have done as well then, but uh, we've done well enough. 19.7 million eligible voters show up. Now, that's a whole other story in and of itself, Judge, because I know that, you know, we've, we've talked since then about how accurately you can quantify who could and couldn't vote, and you've given a number of interviews about this theme exactly. But nevertheless, 87% of those who qualify, wow, showed up, and you've been sharing with us how the IEC rises to the challenge of ensuring that everything was handled well. But when we think back, even operationally, you know, there wasn't enough ink. You ran out of ultraviolet lamps and, and still an election was pulled off which was which was declared to be legitimate. We had a number of thousands actually of international observers. I'd like for you to share with us just the atmosphere, not only from a polling perspective, but the atmosphere and the crackle in the air of South Africa. Iman, uh, uh, let me do it from the perspective of the IEC. We were quite frankly with our heads so busily down doing that job that I personally, for instance, have very little experience, very little memory of voting day and the celebrations out there and the excitement. We were really head down working and learnt a good deal from the news media afterwards. But from our point of view, we started in January for the first time. We were told by the experts, you need to maybe three years to set this thing up. We were told by the politicians and we decided for ourselves, we were going to hold the elections on the 27th of April, as was agreed by the negotiating parties. That was an essential milestone that we just had to reach. There could not be a postponement. If we allowed the momentum of the transition to slip then, 
who knows how oh. far it would have. So we just had to carry on. And that made many of the decisions very much easier. You had to take decisions on the run. You didn't have time for long debates. And if you were wrong, well, then you just had to fix it up once again on the run. So political debates and disputes within the commission simply didn't exist. There was a, a, a universality of desire to get on with the job in the country. We had to use that. Our public relations exercises, our advertising, our, our marketing was focused on selling the concept to the public. South Africa is on its way. Mm. We're all going to the polls. This is our election. This is our transition. This is our hope for the future. Let's all work together. And that spirit did prevail. And it made it a downside easier in the light of all of the administrative handicaps. But then as, as we got closer to the election, as the election day started getting nearer and nearer, and there were still a number of boycotters, a number of groups that were not in the game, number of people who could spoil the game, number of people who could sink the ship before we had even started. The tension mounted. It was in Botswana, it was in KwaZulu, it was in the Eastern Cape, it was in the stronghold of Africana conservatism, mm. particularly in the Western Transvaal. Uh, we just had to keep going and we kept running and it worked. The terrible disappointment was that we had been focusing on let's get the ballot boxes out there, let's get the voting stations open, let's get them staffed, let's get the give the people an opportunity to vote. And once we've done that, then we can sit back and say, thank goodness the job is done. We didn't realize that that's when the job really started. Gathering the ballots, gathering them, and certifying them, collating them, opening them, uh, counting them, recording them, correcting the, the mistakes, certifying the result was an infinitely more tricky job than getting the ballot papers yeah. out there. I mean, I, I, and, and I, I, as, a, as a disappointment, yeah. we thought we'd done the job, we'd only got halfway or not even halfway. Again, it just gives you a sense of the, the scale of what you had to take on and deliver with, sh with such short time at your disposal. We'll pick up the theme of voter education in my next interview, which I'm really excited about. But a final question to you, Judge. The 2021 elections, when we looked at the numbers, we saw that over 40 percent of registered and qualified people chose not to vote. So only, I think, just over 26 million out of 42 million bothered to show up. And I guess the question is, how do you harness that 1994 moment, not just from a place of nostalgia, because nostalgia is too easy um, and, and, and it, it is hollow sometimes, but from a place of purpose in helping people make meaningful, connected political choices this time around. H how do you share that again with the South Af African voting public? Iman, that's a, that's a subject matter for a week's conference, not for a quick talk on television. The fact of the matter is, the people of South Africa were de de determined to go to the polls in order to buy the new South Africa. That spirit is not present among us any longer. We don't have the political leaders that we had. We don't have the environment that we had. We need a rethink of where we are going, why we are not getting there, and that is a national commitment which was not tied to politics. I was, for instance, profoundly disappointed by the president's speaking speech this afternoon. It was a party political speech. It was not a presidential speech. That kind of attitude will not see us through the electoral successes of the future match what we had in 1994. Justice Johan Krichler, retired Constitutional Court judge and our first IEC chair, thank you for joining us and sharing those reflections.